Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our D programming language series. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about struct alignment. So that is to say, how do I figure out what byte or what offset does a particular field fall into in a struct? Now this is particularly important if you've got really strict requirements, if you're sort of uh, aligning things to try to compress your data as we've been talking about in our previous videos. So make sure you check those out in the playlist. But I wanna just go ahead and show you what the capabilities are in the D programming language so you can take advantage of them if you need them. So with that said, let's go ahead and check out the D language uh, webpage here, starting from the language reference. And I'm gonna go ahead down here to structs and unions. And let's just go ahead and search for align here. And basically what this is going to do here is um, this particular section tell us about how fields are laid out. Okay, so uh, non-static data members of a struct, because again, remember the static data members as we've uh, talked about, let me draw this here, are stored in a separate section of our program. Okay, so, uh, you know, we have our source code here. We have the stack somewhere up here. Uh, that's sort of growing in this downward direction. We have our heap memory, which points off to some table. And then we have this data section here that might store our static uh, actual data. But in our actual stack or our actual heap, when we allocate something, uh, that's where we have some, you know, struct like this. Uh, let's just call it, you know, student. And say we have an int for an ID and a string for a name. Uh, and then let's go ahead and just say we have a static int uh, that counts our students, uh, something like that. Uh, this part, uh, or let me change my color here. Let's go ahead and here's a different color here. Uh, this part here, uh, oops, there we are, uh, is the part that, here we go, round three, <laughs> I highlighted that. Uh, this is stored you know, somewhere in the, the data section because it's shared across all of our instances, right? Because of this uh, static here. Uh, but these two things here, uh, that's, that's what we're considering or, or trying to figure out how are they actually stored in a structure, okay? So that's just a little bit about that, meaning that the fields are laid out in uh, lexical order. Uh, fields are aligned according to the line attribute, okay? And there might be padding in between our fields to align them. Okay, so what does this mean here? Let's go ahead into our structure here. Um, and, and let's try something a little bit more uh, simple here. Let me actually get rid of student here. Uh, and I'm just gonna change this around to an ID. Uh, and then let's just add, actually let's restructure this completely. Let's add a character here for their grade and an int here for their uh, ID, something like that. So again, if I'm just thinking about the layout of this here, uh, and I sort of draw this out here, right? We think about it as programmers just like this. We've got a grade and I've got an ID, okay? But there is actually a sort of uh, alignment that takes place where I might have, for instance, uh, at this address here, four bytes to store the grade, whatever that character is, and then I'm offset another four bytes here for my ID. And then I have, you know, the other four bytes because this takes four bytes. This only takes one byte, but it still might pad this, you know, field here, you know, the other three bytes here. And that's what we looked about with bit fields. Again, check out the previous video if you want. So we can have some control over how we align things. Okay, so let's just play around with this align attribute just a little bit. Now, a, a sort of words of caution here that, you know, you're probably not needing to do this, again, if you're writing applications until you get to either a very specific optimization stage. Maybe if you're working with network data and you know it's packed very tightly, um, you might use this to make sure that your struct matches some other structure that's coming in. The point is that you have control in a deprogramming language so you can use this feature here, okay? So we can click on the align attribute here, which is part of the attribute part of the specification here. Uh, you can use it and not, you know, provide anything. And this just does the default compiler alignment, okay? Which is usually to align things to every four bytes here. Uh, but we could change that, okay? Um, and it's kind of neat here. You can use, this is where the align of uh, property uh, comes from here. So you can actually see how this uh, alignment uh, took place here. And then you can see, you know, the different offsets to see how uh, this, um, this field here, C, is offset by eight here, okay? And again, the little tip, uh, I, I skipped over it here uh, on the best practices here, 
is probably to use like we're seeing a static assert to make sure that your alignment expectations match what we see here like what is shown here okay so at compile time we're able to see different use of static we've got to talk about uh, but at compile time we can actually see what the alignment is of this structure so let's just play around with this a little bit here i've got a little example here let's just go ahead and run it here and i can see i've got this struct with the default alignment here uh, and in fact let's just go ahead and add that keyword here like this Okay, we can do that in the deep programming language. Uh, and I've got, uh, let's see, the size of this structure, it's using uh, one byte for this data, but three bytes to pad it. That's a sort of default. And then I've got another four bytes here uh, for my uh, object here. Okay, and I can see the alignment here is four. Uh, now for this one here, I've done the align here with one byte here. So you can see the size is more compact. And I'm not even using the bit fields because I'm just saying, hey, align this to just one byte increments where I can uh, push my data. So this is another way I guess you could uh, do a bit field. Um, or or I, I should say this is another way that you can compress your data. A bit field could still be more, um, you know, what you do with that one byte. You know, I could actually probably fit both of these, maybe fit both these pieces in here, right? I could use seven bits for this integer and one bit for uh, this bool and actually get it down to one uh, byte of information, but I could still use the alignment to kind of compress this structure here. Okay, so that's the idea here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that um, offset of here as well, which is kind of neat. So if I look at the structure uh, default here, data offset of, let's see if we can do that here. Oops, I uh, erased some stuff here. There we are. Uh, moving too fast. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we get here. Uh, so this is kind of neat because I can see the offset of, um, and again, you might have done this in C++ at some point, but I could actually introspect into the uh, fields here and see that, yeah, this, this field here is offset, uh, that's this one, by four bytes from uh, data here, okay? And just to make that a little bit more clear, let's go ahead and add some annotations here. Uh, let me just go ahead and copy this here. Uh, paste that. Oops. There we are. Paste and repeat. There we are. Uh, so let's see the size. Uh, data. Okay. And I can put a little uh, tab here. More. And the align of. Okay. Uh, and let's put a colon here just so we can uh, separate out our input. I'm going to move this over just so you can see everything on one line nicely. And now we could go ahead and see here's our structure. Okay, so just some properties of it. And then you could see the actual offsets as done by the compiler. Now let's copy that for our other struct with the custom alignment. Let me actually rearrange these just so it makes a little bit more sense. There we are. And let's do this here. And let's do struct default alignment. Struct uh, default alignment with... Uh, struct uh, custom alignment okay I'll just do a little substitution there all right and let's see how that looks here okay so now with the custom alignment we can see uh you know the line value is just of one here and that we can see data is placed well at zero it's the first field here and then we're just moving down one byte to place uh more here okay uh, so these types of things would be important to know about, again, especially if you're, the use case I can think of using this might be like network data where you're just streaming in bytes and you don't want to have a bunch of padding or empty bytes, right? So you can make things a little bit more efficient here by knowing the actual structure or if there is some, uh, you know, uh, other optimizations going on. Sometimes, again, depending on your hardware and stuff um, or your compiler, um, you know, these these defaults might not always be uh, four. Uh, maybe in the future it'll be eight or something, uh, but just something to keep in mind there. All right, folks, so with that said here, uh, let me go ahead and just point you to, if you've been enjoying these uh, lessons, go ahead and check out my uh, courses page, courses.mshot.io. You can follow along and track your progress. Uh, these last few related uh, videos on the deep programming language, specifically on bit packing and alignment and such, uh, are quite related, so it's kind of nice if you know if you've seen them, so feel free to check that out. Um, and as always, I just want to thank our members, thank all of our subscribers and viewers for your continued support. Uh, feel free to uh, join as a member. Uh, click the subscribe button, as always, which will show up somewhere here. And thank you, as always, for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.